you'll notice I was not here over the weekend. I think this is the part that we really need to take personal responsibility for. Saturday, I had a little low-grade fever. Uh -oh. <laughs> Everybody, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I don't know when you watch this stuff. I don't have control of your life, but it's the Minuteman. I'm back, and we're going to do something slightly more fun today. You know what we're doing? We are going to laugh at the world we live in. This is... I guess a weekly update now? It's not going to be a regular feature because I'm too unreliable for my own good. But just looking at the world, we're almost done with uh, January, February, March. Oh my god, we're almost done with March. We're in the middle of a pandemic issue. I can't say names or the bots will slap me because I'm a bad boy. But let's see what's happening. First, we have celebrities crying that they have to be on lockdown like the rest of us pitiful people. Can you think of anything more privileged than the people who tell us about our privilege crying that they can't do what they want? Like I shouldn't be eating cereal. Like I should be in a restaurant eating sushi. Like, why are we going through this? I don't want to see it. Oh, I can't get sushi. I have to eat cereal. This ain't right. Oh, I'm sorry. Is the idea that there's a, a, a C word going around right now that can just turn your heart and lungs into a fibrous mass of scar tissue? That's inconvenient for you. I'm sorry, person who makes more than 90% of the country will ever see in their entire life is sad they can't get sushi for breakfast. The absolute horror of your existence. I'm sorry, everybody. Lockdown's over. Go home. <claps> Clap it up. We're done. Everything back to normal. So what if the infection rate jumps up to 100%? Who cares? The rich need to have their sushi. They need their Instagram validation. And they need to get their movies put out so you can tell them how awesome they are. Shut up. All right? Shut up. This is the real world now, and I love it. Okay? Let's talk about that for a second. <laughs> She's a stupid bitch. We're talking about the real world? How about we talk about GameStop being the most horrible company that they've been forever? If you ever worked for GameStop and you're not one of the managers, you know exactly what I'm talking about. All the bull crap they made you pull, uh, all the hard selling when you're a non-commissioned employee, you're an hourly employee, but you better sell, 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 or you ain't gonna get those hours. Uh, they have to have their business licenses pulled in several states just to shut down because they want to consider themselves an essential employee. No, video games aren't essential. I don't care how much of a gamer you are, it ain't essential. It ain't food, water, and clothing. It's entertainment. And I understand the concept of stir crazy, but you know what? If you can't go back and play a video game that you have in your collection, because you're gonna lose your mind, um, I don't care, okay? Don't make an employee work when they don't have to. <laughs> oh, we're not even gonna talk about all that nonsense. Just use a plastic bag, and that way you won't be exposed. People are breathing, this is airborne you mental midgets. Airborne. It's not touch sensitive. It is airborne. Some these people, if you ever worked retail, you know how disgusting the, the general population is. I've had somebody sneeze in my face and I was yelled at for giving them a scowl. You know, somebody splattering me with their mucus. I'm sitting there as a cashier covered in their shit and I'm the one getting a berating look from my manager because I look very unhappy. That's the kind of mindset retail creates in people. And that's saying something from somebody who grew up in Indiana and has a very, very Catholic upbringing to where it is work until the day you die. That is my mindset. It doesn't matter if I feel like I am going to die, I keep working. It doesn't matter if I feel like the entire world around me is collapsing, I keep working. It doesn't matter if I wake up in the morning in a seriously depressive state, I keep working. That is a mindset that got drilled into me as a child. You keep doing what is required of you. I know it sounds dangerous, I know it sounds insane when you really start looking at it, but that's the mindset I grew up with. Indiana versus Illinois. When I look at those two states, when I grew up versus where I live versus where I grew up, the mindset of the employee, the mindset of the culture of the people is insane. Because in Illinois people are like California people to me. Incredibly lazy. They, they'll do the bare minimum and then complain that they got bare minimum results as, as repayment. Indiana? They'll accept the bare minimum and give you maximum effort because why? It's just the way the culture works there. 
They're super, super professional. I appreciated it when I grew up. I appreciate it more now that I'm out of there. I, I don't want to live in Indiana again, don't get me wrong. I don't want to live there willingly. I might move back there because Illinois is getting to the point where it's untenable to survive if you're not making a million dollars a month because they want to, uh, yeah, look up the history of Illinois' taxes and uh, see where its tax rate's going right now to our property tax. That's not even including everything else. So, yeah, they're the ones who want to do the streaming tax. Oh, you're watching Netflix? Give us money. That's, that's Illinois' mindset. So it's getting to the point where it's not worth living there anymore. So we're going to talk about that got GameStop, we're talking about the C-Virus, we're talking about the celebrities crying in their billion dollar mansions because they can't walk outside and have their fans rub their balls for them. Okay, what else can we talk about? Hmm. Oh, that's a few other things. Uh, let's see, we got uh, mainstream media. I hate saying that phrase. I really, uh, I really, really do. But if you've been following the news at all, you have radio on, you're watching TV, you've seen or heard of almost the daily press conferences that the administration is holding talking about the outbreak, the pandemic, and the responses to it. Apparently, it's a ratings hit, and the media doesn't like it, to the point where you have journalists demanding their networks no longer cover these live because they don't like the idea that people are hearing from the big orange bad man and liking what he's saying. You know what? Have you, have you meant, oh my god, have you children decided what I'm allowed to listen to? Because that's what you're doing. You're no longer reporting, you're curating the news to me. That's not news. That is, that is dictation, okay? And when you dictate something to people, they question it more. When you decide, no, 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 don't look at the left, look only at the right, don't look at the right, look only at the left, don't look ahead of you, look at your feet. When you start telling people what to look at, they start wandering. They start questioning, why are you controlling what am I, the lo what am I allowed to look at? Dangerous. Because you people want to complain about the fake news arguments and Trump destroying the media and not showing respect. Th that's not new. All right. That's not new. People haven't respected the media for a long time because the media has been a joke for a long time. When the media decided they wanted to start playing partisan, partisanism, partisanism, I can speak words. I'm, I'm, I'm eloquent. When you want to start speaking and telling people what is the truth, you start becoming the moral arbiter of what you feel is true. You are no longer curation, you are dictation. When you start thinking that you are the decider of what is reality, when people don't agree with that, it becomes a moral imperative for you to go after them. That's when dangerous mindsets start to take root. And that's what the media has been doing. Uh, you can blame Fox News all you want, you can blame CNN. It's not new that new. That's just when it became apparent. And you know what? Fox News only existed because the media started going that far to the left in the first place. Fox News is a result of the media becoming partisan, not the cause of the media becoming partisan. That's another example of trying to rewrite history. There was a time that most people can agree, it turns out, very narrow time, when the idea of objectivism was the imperative in journalism. That got destroyed in the 70s and 80s, when you had people like Tom Brokaw having his little manic, depressive rage fit about Vietnam on the TV, and it kind of turned the public against Vietnam. Why? Because for at that time, he was considered the voice of America. He was an incredibly trusted, unbiased news source, and then he put his bias into it, and it controlled the narrative. And what did that do? Oh, it got things going, but then there's a snapback, because people tend to forget, in America, we have a huge problem with snapback. You push us too far in one direction, there's going to be a snapback, and that snapback's going to be worse in the direction you wanted us to go into in the first place. Why did Trump happen? You think Trump just magically occurred? You think he just happened because people just hate minorities and stuff? Is that what you really think? Because that's your mindset. You're in for a world of hurt, because look at the world around you. Um, no. Most people who aren't special can tell you that Trump is mostly populist. For the longest time he was considered a democrat, but now he's considered a hard right-wing republican. Doesn't make sense, does it? Like that far of a divergence? Doesn't make sense. Sure, he, you, people do change their politics. I've changed my politics. Everybody changes their politics, but nobody changes that drastically unless the Oberton window is changed that drastically. So you know what? 
Why is there always gates? You've been on the internet culture long enough. You've probably seen some of it. Why do we keep having comics gates? Why do we keep having gamer gates? Why do we keep having all of these gates where it's pu purely political divide and it's always one side having this small narrow... They're always small numbers. They're not a lot of them, but they're very vocal. Super, super far to the left. Destroying everything around them. And anybody who doesn't agree with that is the enemy and ultra white wing. It doesn't matter what your actual politics are, they've decided your politics for you. If you don't agree with them bashing whoever they don't like, you agree with that person. You're clearly on that side. And then if you say, well, I don't believe that, they'll do the same thing they always do. Scream at you about straw manning and uh, moving the goalposts. It's just, it's madness. Because we've let our culture get to the point where everyone has an opinion. Absolutely. Everyone has a right to the opinion. Absolutely. My opinion is the only one that matters. Stop right there, bucko. We have a problem. And that's where we have the issue. Everyone can have an opinion. Everyone has the right to an opinion, except if I don't like it. Dangerous. Dangerous and stupid. That's the world we live in today. The media decides what's truth. The truth doesn't exist if I don't like it. And if you say the truth that I don't like because it's offensive to me, uh, we destroy you because how dare you have an opinion against me. Uh, across the board. I don't like it. But you know what? We're back to the meat. We're back to the meat and potatoes of the argument. Uh, C Chan has done the most good for getting people to pay attention to the world around them and figure out what issues actually matter. Okay? It has been blowing people's minds the idea that we have all these little extraneous issues, the Tumblr rights, all the Tumblr issues. Nobody cares about that anymore. No one cares. You know why? Because we have to look right down to brass tacks of society. The things that keep you alive are the things that matter the most. And those things, the things that the ultra-progressives want, don't matter. They don't. That's why everyone was so eager to go laugh at fucking iDubs and his simpery with his girlfriend. Which, whatever. I don't care. He's... Don't, don't watch him then. I'm not going to. I don't care. His content's gotten boring to me in the last year anyways. The last good thing I got to watch was his Airsoft Fatty documentary, if we'll call it a documentary. Uh, 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 great, I'm going to watch the Bean Review. Great, goody. I'm super excited, guys. No, I don't care. If he wants to be boring, be boring. Do what he's going to do. I don't have control over him. Do whatever. His girlfriend wants to be an e-girl. Let her. I don't have to respect that. Are you insane? Why would I? So... That's what people were eager for that. Why? It was 10 seconds of distraction from that crushing reality knowing that almost everybody in this world is powerless against things that can destroy us. That's the reality. We can't say or do much, but we can make a big stink about minor issues that have no relevance in anything. And that was that, that, was that tiny little break and everyone was incredibly happy for it. But then we got back to it. So now we got the media trying to stop. It's just, it's just Trump lie. It's all it is. I don't really care. I, my politics remain the same. I, I exist to watch chaos. Why? Because to be as, oh God, cliche as possible. It's been said before. It's been even, you have people like Littlefinger and Game of Thrones saying it, that chaos is a ladder. It's true. Granted, his reasoning for chaos was stupid and, and their version of the TV show ruined everything. The books are better. Read the books. But chaos is a ladder. Chaos exposes everything. Look what's happening right now with the virus. Chaos. And what has it done? It's exposed to people the things that actually matter. That's what I live for. To expose things that matter because everything else is garbage. Find your own happiness. Know who your friends are. Maintain your loyalties. And live your life. If you can't do those things, what is your life? What are you doing? Why are you fighting? Are you fighting for a greater goal? Is it really greater if when there is a moment of panic, that goal means nothing? Consider that for a few minutes. You know what? Consider that. This is a longer video than I'm usually putting on in a rant. This is slightly, for some people, might be incoherent, and I don't blame them. I'm gonna drink some Mountain Dew. I'm going to stare out of the sky, maybe work on a Gundam model, play some video games, talk to my friends, and live my life, because that's all you can do. You have no control over this thing. We can't stop it. You can't fight it. You can't panic. 
Panic does you gives panic gives you nothing. But you know what you can do? Be better. Be stronger. Be smarter. Your politics don't matter. Your pet projects don't matter. The only thing that matters is oh my god, my fire alarm's going off. Bye guys.